co-stars and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben. Time travel is often thought of as fantasy. And so when movies portray time travel, few think to ask if the time travel made any sense. But the truth is, there is some science behind time travel. A science that movies often heavily neglect. I'm home! <laughs> I recently traveled to the future and discovered that you're all dead. No, not all people, just Generation Films viewers. It turns out that about 20 years from now, you all unite together and start an anti-dolphin death cult in which you take to the seas and exact a global genocide on our dolphin enemies. This in turn caused the dolphin mothership to descend from the heavens, invade, and well, whomever they didn't make a skin suit out of, they took back to their ship and enslaved as human labor. But I digress, today we are taking a look at the science of time travel, and what movies that involve such journeys get wrong and right. The first thing we have to do is understand everything we know about time travel as it stands. We start with Einstein's special theory of relativity. What did it teach us? That space and time are two entities that are inextricably and infinitely linked. Everything in this universe, down to the smallest particle, exists within the four-dimensional fabric of space-time. What does that mean? Well, basically, that moving through space is moving through time. Often movies portray time travel as traveling to another dimension or universe altogether. But the truth is that distance of time travel really just depends on the speed at which one is moving through space time. In other words, in concept, moving forwards through time is easy. As Einstein's special theory of relativity tells us, time passes at different rates for people who are moving relative to one another to the future! You don't need one of those complex, unexplained contraptions from film called a time machine to travel forward in time. All you need is a rocket. If you are stationary on the Earth's surface, then anyone who is in motion relative to you will move through space by a greater amount and thus move a smaller amount through time. Though, this effect only becomes significant when you are moving at the speed of light. This is how we get the Twins Paradox, which states that if one were to leave Earth in a spacecraft traveling at an appreciable fraction of light speed and then return, only a few years might have passed on the ship while many years would have gone by on Earth. The traveler moving through space would return much younger than his twin. This effect reaches its extreme near the singularity of a black hole, because the gravitational pull of a black hole is extremely powerful. Time appears to move slower near massive objects because the object's gravitational force bends space-time. This is called gravitational time dilation, which means that time moves slower as gravity increases. That's why time passes slower for objects closer to the center of the Earth where the gravity is stronger. This is what time travel is, moving through space at a faster rate than we would consider normal. This is why movies like Time Cop and Back to the Future, to some degree, are thinking along the right lines when it comes to time travel. Both movies involve a fast-moving vehicle traveling through time, so the speed element is there. But overall, the time travel science in these movies is basic and full of plot holes. Certainly, 88 miles per hour is not enough to induce a significant time travel effect. And in Time Cop, the rocket sled speed wouldn't just randomly cause a portal to pop up in the middle of the room. Where are we going today, Mr. Peabody? Not where, Sherman. When? Instantaneous time travel, such as in Mr. Peabody and Sherman, just isn't part of a serious time travel theory. Time Cop is an especially dumb movie, as it posits that time travel into the future is impossible, while time travel into the past is perfectly feasible. In reality, the latter is infinitely harder. As we already know, we are always moving forward in time. Not to mention, the movie claims that time travel back to the present from the past is possible, as if that's somehow different from time travel into the future. A disappointing plot flaw in the otherwise highly intellectual Jean-Claude Van Damme canon. Are you men enough to fight with me? Anyone who opposes me will be destroyed. Anyway, these movies simply use made-up science where actual science can't explain how the time travel mechanisms they've invented function. Still, their explanations are better than movies in which magic is the only explanation, a la Harry Potter, or where there is little explanation at all, such as in The Time Machine. In both movies, the time travelers are standing still while time traveling, which goes against all known time travel science. The 1968 version of Planet of the Apes actually does a pretty good job of portraying speed of light time travel. 
In the movie, a team of human astronauts have been hibernating on a long, near light speed voyage in space, during which they aged 18 months due to time dilation. When they awake, they find that the Earth date is November 25th, 3978, approximately two millennia after their departure in 1972. Keeping it simple with time travel is the key to portraying it accurately. And so any film that only focuses on time travel into the future and involves light speed travel is bound to come out without too many complaints about the realism of it all. Star Wars, on the other hand, completely drops the ball. The franchise constantly portrays characters traveling in hyperspeed, speed close to or faster than light speed, using hyperdrive, but does little to account for relative changes in time throughout the galaxy. Ships traveling at light speed simply get to their destinations and back to their origin points, with time passing at a constant rate for all beings. Of course, this is somewhat explained away as hyperspace being a separate dimension, with each point in hyperspace being associated with a point in real space. That said, you might say, shut up, Ben. It's Star Wars. They have Wookiees and food that wears clothing. In any case, it isn't necessarily accurate to say that the only way to time travel is through the conventional light speed method mentioned thus far. There is another possibility, that of a wormhole, also theorized by Einstein. Wormholes are most commonly understood as tunnels through space connecting very distant parts of the universe. Thus, when we see Doctor Who fly his TARDIS through a time vortex, while the science behind how the TARDIS initiated the vortex is up for debate, the medium of travel itself is not totally implausible. So what is a wormhole really? Well, in theory, if one massive black hole is formed next to another black hole that is formed from negative mass, then a wormhole can be created between the two. Then no matter how far the black holes are apart, as long as one end of the wormhole is accelerating at the speed of light, as in much faster than the other end of the wormhole, then time at each end of the wormhole will not pass at the same rate. And so if you travel one way through the wormhole, you will travel into the future, and if you travel the other way, you will travel back into the past. We don't know for sure if wormholes exist, and if they do, they're probably smaller than atoms, and would need to be stretched out in order to travel through them. One would need to harness enough negative energy, another controversial topic, to keep the wormhole open long enough for someone or something to be able to travel through it. Nonetheless, wormhole time travel is a real theory in actual science. Listen, I'm not asking you to believe Einstein, but are you really going to question Morgan Freeman? Fly into a wormhole and you can take a shortcut to another place or time. That said, it would still be impossible to use the wormhole to go back further in time than the point at which the wormhole was created. In other words, after traveling one way through a wormhole to the future, by turning around and traveling the other way through the wormhole, you could only travel back to where you started and not further back than that. Additionally, a wormhole is limited by the points in time and speed of its two ends. One could not use a wormhole to travel anywhere in time, as we see Doctor Who and many other time-traveling characters do. Yeah. Two of the best movies to portray wormhole time travel are Interstellar and Contact. In Interstellar, Christopher Nolan actually takes us into a wormhole. What happens inside is largely a product of imagination, but the method of time travel certainly represents real scientific theory. In Contact, Dr. Eleanor Arroway uses a fictional machine, created from alien schematics, to enter into a series of wormholes, and ends up overlooking an advanced civilization in the future. Both of these films have plenty of imagination to them, but the time travel aspects they largely get right. Perhaps that's because both the film Interstellar and the book by Carl Sagan behind the film Contact employed the consultation of world-famous theoretical physicist Kip Thorne, a leading expert on the astrophysical implications of Einstein's general theory of relativity. The universe, after, right when it's born, it expands faster than the speed of light. Really the only other theory out there concerning how time travel to the past might be possible involves going faster than the speed of light. No, I'm not referring to Superman flying around the Earth so much faster than light that he rewinds time. I'm talking about what are known as tachyon particles. These are particles that from conception travel faster than the speed of light. There is, however, no experimental evidence for the existence of these particles, and faster than light travel might have to be limited to science fiction. Hey. 
But the science of time traveling is one thing. The effects of time traveling are another. As we all remember in Ray Bradbury's A Sound of Thunder, when the main character accidentally crushes a butterfly in the past, on his return to the future, the world has changed drastically. This concept is summed up in what's called the grandfather paradox. A paradox of time travel in which inconsistencies emerge through changing the past. The name comes from the idea that a time traveler could potentially travel to the past and kill their own grandfather before the conception of their father or mother, which prevents the time traveler's existence in the first place. When it comes to cinema, some films, such as Looper and 12 Monkeys, portray a fixed timeline, in which one cannot change the course of events by traveling into the past, because any time travel that takes place has always been written into the timeline. Other films contain an alterable timeline, thus considering the grandfather paradox a reality. In these films, to some degree, the changes one makes while visiting the past can lead to a different future. I must follow them back. Repair whatever damage they've done. Back to the Future tries, at least in a simple way, to portray such effects of time travel, with Marty McFly needing to be careful while in the past to not prevent his own existence. And then in The Terminator, both The Terminator and Kyle Reese travel to the past in order to impact the future. I'm a friend of Sierra Connor. The Terminator to change it, and Kyle Reese to maintain it. Of course, the problem with these films is largely that the method of time travel itself is either unexplained or scientifically implausible. Now, I know a lot of you out there are probably going, what about Groundhog Day? Well, Groundhog Day contains a closed time loop in that weatherman Phil Connors has to continually repeat his same day over and over again while maintaining his memory of each loop. And there are some loose scientific theories about time loops. Kurt Gödel, the Austrian-born logician and mathematician who worked at Princeton's Institute for Advanced Study alongside Einstein in the 1940s, discovered that if the universe were rotating, it would then be possible for an object to travel in a closed loop in space and arrive back at its starting point before it left. Wait! You see, light can bend gravity in space-time. When the space-time fabric bends, two points at the ends of a chosen path start to come closer to each other. Eventually, if space-time bends enough, perhaps due to a black hole, the two points chosen will lie on a single point, thus the existence of a time loop. This all said, most scientists believe that Gödel's theory is highly unrealistic and that there is evidence that the universe as a whole is not rotating. Long story short, generally scientists do not buy the idea of a time loop. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Well, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe down below. And thank you, Generation Films viewers. Our channel is currently on fire. And remember, you are the villain in this movie we like to call life, and nothing you will ever do can ever change that. I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.